Well, good evening and welcome to our midweek service. It's great to have you joining us this evening and so thankful for God's word, for the work of God. And boy, just how blessed we are to have the technology to come right into your, your home or office, wherever you're at watching this, this uh, broadcast. We, we thank you for joining us and we just look forward to what God has in store for us this evening. Just before our special song and the message, I wanted to give you just some uh, announcements. Coming up on Sunday, we'll have services in the auditorium here at 9 a.m. and 10.30. And then the evening service will be at 5.30, and that will be online. So make sure and make note of that. That'll be online at 5.30 this Sunday afternoon. The children's choir will be singing at the 1030 service um, this Sunday, so we look forward to that. And then next week, we will not have a service on Wednesday night, no live stream on Wednesday night, uh, but we will have our uh, Christmas Eve service, which is Thursday night. That will be on at 5, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon, and we look forward to having you join us either here in person or online for our candlelight service and that'll be an exciting time so just keep these things in mind and then as we as we look forward to just finishing out this year uh, we have our activity center we've laid the foundation we have placed the building on that foundation and brother Dave Vogel has helped us coordinate that even though they've moved to Arizona he still has people here helping us coordinate things and so we appreciate uh, Dave Vogel helping us and so over the holiday we have scheduled the concrete we have scheduled the electrical hookup for the building and uh, getting people to come in and remodel the inside so it should be pretty well complete uh, by the middle of of January and so we look forward to getting that done and having it complete by the end of February but we're asking folks to give towards the project. If you would like to give a donation, you can do it through the church. Uh, we are going to have a GoFundMe uh, account uh, opportunity to give online. and uh, Or you can give, for you that attend the church, you can give online through the church and just designate it for the activity center slash lunchroom. Uh, and we just look forward to having this building. Uh, it's out there next to the, the picnic pavilion. So we'll have electricity there. We can have our refrigerator, the microwaves. When we have an outdoor event, uh, they can either be warm inside that building or be, or be cooled off in the summer. It's going to be a great facility for us. We're so thankful how God has provided, and we just look forward to uh, raising the money to finish that. We're looking to raise about $40,000. And so uh, if you'd like to help, uh, if you give that before January 1st, of course, you can get a tax deduction, a deductible gift. And uh, so thank you for, for praying. Thank you for participating in giving and your contributions to the church, your tithe, your offerings. And God has just been so good. And we're thankful for the souls that have been saved, the lives that have been changed, and the people that have been encouraged um, through some difficult in dark days with the pandemic, we've also had some folks pass away recently. And uh, so pray for one another, lift each other up. God is good, and God is, God's grace is sufficient, and so we just look to him. And so thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, right now we'll have a special song, and then Brother Mike Moyer will come and present the message for us. Thank you for joining us again.
Thank you again for joining us tonight and being a part of our service online. And just an incredible time of year. I love Christmas. And I, it is by far my favorite time of the year. I, I'm sure many of you probably share the same sentiment. Have you ever tried to break it down? What is your favorite thing about Christmas? I was thinking about that. There's so many things that come to mind. The Christmas trees. We took a poll today in one of the chapels and we're trying to see who has the artificial tree and who has the live Christmas tree. I've actually never in my house had a live Christmas tree. Some of you, that's probably what you have every year. But I love the Christmas tree. I love just sitting. I mean, one of my favorite things, sit there and read and you got the Christmas tree. I, mean, I, I just love it. The Christmas lights outside. I don't know if you've decorated your house outside, but putting those Christmas lights up or even just driving around the neighborhood and looking at the different houses and how they are decorated. It's just something cheerful about it, something fun about it. The Christmas songs, <laughs> just listening to them. Some of the songs you listen to it inevitably will just bring a smile to your face as maybe some memory comes back. Or just the song itself. My, my kids now, they hear the Christmas songs, and, and one of my, my sons, he, he will tell you which movie it is from. That movie, that song's from, and, and they associate those things. The Christmas movies. Uh, there, there's funny ones. There's sad ones. There's great ones. And then there's Hallmark ones. But we have different Christmas movies that we, that we, we, we watch during this time of year. The Christmas cookies. Oh, those, those are always good. I, I, my mom would always do like these huge batch of Christmas cookies. She would make a cookie. It was called a Buckeye. I don't know if you've ever had this before. It's probably not the actual name of it, but that's what we called it. Unbelievable. It will change your life. But, uh, but Christmas cookies, the Christmas traditions, that's probably one of our favorite parts, right? We each have different Christmas traditions that we have with our family. 
For some of us, it's, it's traveling to see family. Sometimes we see family we don't see any other time of the year but Christmas. And being there with them and just talking to them. I always look forward to spending time with my cousins and just, just having fun. When you open your presents, it's interesting to talk to people. And some people will be midnight on Christmas Eve. Some people will be Christmas Eve, some Christmas Day, and just the tradition that somehow started and you continue today. There's so many different traditions. The Christmas meal, those are different, aren't they? Some of us, maybe, maybe tamales, maybe it's a, the ham or whatever it is. There are so many things about Christmas that, that we like. But as a kid, what was your favorite thing about Christmas? Now, right now, you could be thinking about different things, but let's all be honest. As a child, our favorite thing about Christmas, or I guess I can't say for everybody, for me, was the presents. You look forward to that day. Oh, that's the night where it's hard to go to sleep, right? You just can't wait to get up and to see what presents you got. And I remember this as, as a child. Uh, we, would, we would open up presents at my grandparents' house on Christmas Eve that night. And what we would do is as a family, we would eat dinner. And then after dinner, we would open up presents. And I don't know why, but that dinner may have been the longest dinner in the world. The, the adults were all upstairs and they'd be eating. And the kids, we were downstairs. The kids were done eating in like 30 seconds. Like, we were done. We were ready to go. But the parents were up, up, upstairs. And it's like you start sending people up to see, give us a report. You know, how much longer are they going to be up there? And you just look forward to opening those presents. But did any of you get this speech when you were a child? Because sometimes it seems like in a family, there's that person that gives gifts, but the gifts that they give are not as relevant to, to you. And it maybe isn't something that you really enjoy that much of. So I remember hearing the speech. Now, you're, when you get a present, remember, always say thank you. Always be appreciative. Because it's not all about the present. It's about the fact that, that, that there's family and they love you. That's what it's about. It's not about the present. It, 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 it's about so much more. Christmas is about more than presents. And we've heard that. In fact, we've said that. But have you ever thought about what is Christmas all about? What should our focus be at Christmas time? If you take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter number 2, we are going to look at a passage of Scripture that many people refer to as the Christmas story. This is a passage of Scripture that many of you, for maybe some play when you were just a child, memorized verses here. Some of us, we read this every Christmas before you open presents. You sit down with your family and you open up to Luke chapter number 2 and you read this portion of Scripture. And tonight, I'm not going to give us anything new. But I want us to focus on something. And I want us to look at this with, ah, we know this, and we've, we've read this hundreds of times, we've memorized it, we've seen the plays, we... but I want you to really think of it, and think about the people and the events of that very first Christmas. And in Luke chapter 2, verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. First part of the Christmas story is the trip. There's a trip that has to be taken. This trip's different, though. Starts with a man by the name of Caesar Augustus, the emperor of Rome. He's in charge of it all. And Caesar Augustus wants everybody to pay taxes, right? Government wanting taxes. I guess it's not a new thing. And so he orders them, though, to go to the place of their birth. Joseph, his house, his family is from Bethlehem. 
So that is where he must go, and him and his new wife, Mary, must travel down to Bethlehem. Now, this, this journey is about 70 miles as the crow flies. But remember something. During these times, most Jewish people did not travel through Samaria. They would go over to the Jordan River and take the river down and then cut back over to Bethlehem, which in some cases makes it maybe about 90 mile trip. To put this into some, for me, it helps me when I think of a, a trip today that you might take. To go from the church to Disneyland is about 68 miles. So that's about as far as it is from Nazareth to Bethlehem straight. To go from the church to SeaWorld is about 83 miles. So that's adding in the extra time. Now, these are trips that maybe some of you have taken. Now, they're not that long. With kids crying, they will seem quite a bit longer, but honestly, it's going to take you an hour and a half, two hours to get to either one of these locations. But we also have to remember in Bible times the means of transportation. They're walking. Maybe they have a donkey or some type of animal to help them on the way. But this is going to be a very long journey. It's estimated that maybe you would walk 10 to 20 miles a day. That's what it's estimated. So if they were doing that, you know what I was thinking about today when I was doing my devotions? They would be, now, now I know, I know that December 25th is probably not the exact date that Jesus was born. I know, but let's just say that that's the day we celebrate. So let's say December 25th is that exact day. They'd be getting to, ready to leave Nazareth. Maybe they've already left. But they're getting ready to take that journey. It's going to be a hard one. Here's the thing I was thinking about. We know that they get to Bethlehem. Now, I, Mary, she knows she's going to have this baby. I wonder if she's wondering where she's going to have the baby at. It seems as if she is very pregnant, could have this baby at any time. But that's, that's the trip they're on. They take this trip and we come to verse number six and it says, And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The birth, a baby is born. <laughs> it's always exciting when a baby is born. Can you imagine the excitement of these first-time parents? As this baby is no ordinary baby. And we, we picture this in our mind, right? Probably most of us have a nativity set, set up somewhere in our house, or we've seen one, and we see these pictures. But when we really break it down and, and try to think about what might have been there, more than likely, it's not some wooden type of structure that they would have used. More than likely, it's sort of like a cave. In fact, if you were to go to Bethlehem today, there would be caves similar to this, that what they would be used for is sometimes the shepherds could take the sheep into them and sort of stay out of the elements. And many Bible scholars believe this is something very similar to where Jesus would have been born in. Now, we all picture the animals. Now, some people believe there would have been animals there. Other people believe maybe it was more of a vacant one. No matter what it was, this is not the ideal place to have a baby. Nothing about it is ideal. We picture the manger, that wooden structure. It's got all that hay coming out of it and everything like that. But more than likely, the manger was not a wooden structure. More than likely, it's made of stone. Now, I'm sure they used something to try to make that a little bit more comfortable. Maybe it was hay. The swaddling clothes is just strips of cloth that they would use to sort of wrap that little baby up. And Mary gives birth. And she takes the baby and lays it in a manger. We see the trip, the birth. And then there's an announcement, right? We come to that in verse number 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. These guys got the night shift. I'm sure that it's hard to stay awake at night. And all of a sudden, everything changes. There's an angel. 
They're afraid. Very afraid. Verse 10, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Those shepherds. <laughs> I just imagine them, did we really just see that? Or am I going crazy? Did you, did you see what, did you hear that? And one of them's like, guys, we've got to go check out what's going on. Verse number 16, and they, made, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Shepherds out in a field. Bethlehem today, they have fields they call the shepherd's fields. These would have been the fields somewhere in this area where those shepherds would have been that night. It's not a flat area. There's a lot of hills, a lot of valleys. But somewhere out there that night, everything changed. That sky filled with stars, and without a doubt, they could, they could see there was a star a little bit different. Everything changed for them. An angel, a choir of angels, running to the city, seeing that baby. And what did they do after? And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. This, right, is the Christmas story. A passage we've memorized verses from. A passage that we read every Christmas. And when we read this, if we're not careful, we can turn the Christmas story into a lot of different people. A mean ruler who just wanted the people's money and for his own pride wanted to know how many people were in the kingdom. So he made everyone make this difficult journey. A, a young couple, newly married, have gone through a very, very difficult time as as, as no doubt people have looked down, with them, down at them with despair, with, 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 with sort of anger. I can't believe these people. They say they follow God, but clearly they've, they've broken the laws of marriage. Joseph, a just man, who God appears to, and, and, and he, he takes Mary to be his wife. Getting into Bethlehem, the the hurry to try to find a place for the baby to be born, the, the anguish when there was no... Guys, can you imagine being Joseph and trying to find a place for your wife and not being able to find it? And that feeling that you would have, and somebody saying, you know, we don't have any place here, but there is, there is a place. It's not that nice, but you can go there. A birth, an announcement. Shepherds minding their own business out in the field, and all of a sudden, everything changes for these shepherds. They hear the angels. They, they, they run into town. They see this. They go telling everybody. And if we're not careful, that is what we associate with the Christmas story. And all of those are events in the Christmas story. But it's not the most important one. To me, the most important event in the Christmas story is not found in Matthew. It's mentioned. It's not found in Luke. There's four Gospels. Those two give the accounts of Jesus' birth. But the one that is written to help us really, truly understand the importance of that night, I believe is found in the book of John. John chapter number 1. Where in John chapter number 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who is the Word here? It is Jesus Christ. And here's what Christmas is all about. 
Go with me to verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Do you know what Christmas is all about? What is the Christmas story all about? It is all about Jesus. God being born in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. This is what it's all about. And there's a lot of narratives that we can learn from when we look at these events that very first Christmas. But don't ever miss that the very first Christmas is all about Jesus. It's all about God becoming man. That's what Christmas is about. And I love the shepherds. But it's not about the shepherds. Mary and Joseph, what an incredible few months they've had. But it's not all about them. Caesar Augustus, who thought everything was about him. It really is a, very much a small side note in the greatest event in human history. Because the greatest event in human history is John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That night, God the Son became man. Now understand, he, he already had been because he was in the womb. But that night he was born. And for the first time, human beings were holding God. Jesus the one who had created everything. That's what it says in John 1, 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. A baby. A stable. A manger. They're all great, but it's all about the baby. It's all about that very first Christmas gift. God becoming man. And why did God become man? It's found in John chapter 1, verse number 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Why? So that we could have the right relationship with God. C.S. Lewis said this, the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. The Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. I can have the right relationship with God because of Christmas. There is no Easter without Christmas. And that's the whole reason He came in the first place. So when we talk about Christmas, oh, it's so easy to focus on so many things. But one thing that I've always heard, it's not about the presence. And you know what? It's true. But it is all about the present. The greatest gift ever given. Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. Becoming man. So that one day, 2,000 years later, in the year 2020, with all of the crazy events that have gone on this year, we can know for sure we are sons of God because the Son of God came to this earth. And tonight, if you don't know for sure, that that relationship with God is right. Can I tell you that is what Christmas is all about? It's all about your relationship with God. That's why He came. That's why He was in Mary's womb. That's why He was born. Is so that you could have the right relationship with God. Because it's nothing you can do. It's all what He did. So this Christmas, if you have never received that gift, then receive it this Christmas. 
It's the very first Christmas gift ever given, and it will never be beaten. And it's for you. And those of us that have received that gift, we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. We know this Christmas story, this Christmas account. Let's focus on what Christmas is all about. Oh, talk about the Mary and Joseph. Oh, talk about the shepherds. Talk about the wise men. Talk about that stable, that manger. But let us always focus on the gift. It may not be all about the presence, but it's all about the greatest gift ever given. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Let's focus on Him this year. <laughs> I mean, one thing that 2020 has taken away from us is a lot of the things we usually have on our calendar. But let's take advantage of that. To spend time focusing on what Christmas is all about. It's all about Him. That's what it's all about. Focus on Jesus. Dear God, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for Christmas. I thank you for your Son coming to this earth. You loving us enough to send your Son to this earth. And Him coming to this earth with one purpose. So that we could have that right relationship with you. So that we could become children, your children. I pray that if there's somebody that does not know for sure that they are one of your children, that today they would reach out to us. That today they would call upon you. And God, for those of us that, we, we, we know we're children of God. We know we're your children. I pray that this Christmas, you would help us to really, truly focus on what Christmas is all about. It's all about Jesus. His love. Your love. For us. And I pray that we would not forget that with all the busyness that will go on. We love you. We thank you for everything you do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Again, let me encourage you. Sunday morning, I look forward to being right here in the auditorium with so many of you. 9 a.m. and 10.30, if you're able to, please come on out and be a part of those services. Sunday night will be online. And then we look forward to next Thursday, a week from tomorrow, as we will meet here at 5 o'clock for our Christmas Eve service. Again, if you're able to be here in person, we encourage you to be out for that special service. Maybe you're not. Join us online as we spend time as a church family before maybe many of us get together with our families. But we spend time truly reflecting on what Christmas is all about. I hope you have a great rest of your night. We will look forward to Sunday. And if you do need anything, please do contact us. Let us know. We're praying for you. But if there's a way that we can pray better for you, please let us know. We're thankful for all of you and looking forward to seeing what God has for us as we finish out the year 2020. Have a great rest of your night.